very, very welcome here to Sleepy Eat uh, and this conference, How to 3D Print a Wooden Home. Uh, it's a challenging title, but we've taken that. <clears throat> uh, my name is Åke Fransson and I am project leader for the project, PLUS project, uh, which arranged this conference. Uh, and uh, I will tell you a little bit about uh, the project. Uh, but first, to you who never heard about Umeå University, I will say a few words about it. There might be someone who's not from here and haven't heard about that. Uh, so, University was founded for about 50 years ago uh, as the fifth university in Sweden at that time. And here is the previous king, uh, Gustav Sretalos, at the inauguration of uh, the university, uh, first rector. Uh, today, well, this is not the main campus, as you understand. Uh, we're now at the arts campus, and the main campus is about two kilometers up there. Uh, and today, the university has about 30, 35,000 students, depending on how you count, if you count the PhD students as well. Um, okay, so it has been a fantastic development both at the university and also at uh, in Umeå as a city, of course, because for 50 years ago it was half the number of residents as it is today, uh, and today we have about 125,000 people living here in this community. So, that is everything about Umeå University that you have to know. Hmm? Uh, as I said, today we are here at uh, Sleeperiet, and uh, in this picture you can see up, uh, maybe, oh boy, isn't it working? It was working. Ah, there. Here is Sleeperiet, and you recognize the building as it is today, more or less. But everything here is changed, and a lot here as well. Uh, Sleeperiet, that is something to do with uh, grinding wood. Uh, so they made a mechanical pulp uh, previously. And actually in this hall there were large grinding machines doing that. Uh, then this is, this picture <coughs> is from, well, 1920s, 30s, about. And uh, the sh th there was a change, of course, turning towards chemical pulp uh, manufacturing, and the, the factory was uh, moved and to other places. Anyway, so a large industry in Umeå at that time. And this is connected to what we are talking about today, wood as a material for, for uh, building production. Uh, Slipperiet, that is, well, you can still see the building here, reckon, uh, but now it, we have these buildings as well. So the arts campus, which is here, is where we also have the School of Fine Arts, uh, the Institute of Design, and of course also School of Architecture, which is the latest one, uh, all included into Uni Umeå University. And we also have uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art, which is, uh, they are between exhibitions now, but, well, it's open and it's here. So if you have time, go there. 
<clears throat> so that is also everything about Sleepy Riet. Now we turn to the PLUS project. It started for about uh, three years ago, <clears throat> and uh, one of the targets or one of the focuses we have is to develop materials from uh, forestry, forests, and how they can be used as material for additive manufacturing. That is one part of the, f of the project. There are many targets. And other is how digital technique can actually, with new materials, change the design part or develop or uh, uh, turn it to new ideas, how to use new techniques and new materials and how they put together to new thoughts about how to create new design. So that is a challenge as well. And in mind also, keep in mind the sustainability and use materials that is sustainable for future uh, home production houses as well. And the last one is also to make this as a business. So that's also part of the project where we work together in the, with the SMEs, at least some of them, to <coughs> strengthen their business plans and develop it with new techniques and sustainability thoughts. And as you see, this project is funded by EU, the Regional Development Fund, so we're grateful to them. Uh, <clears throat> so, who are we? Well, as you see, there are both the different departments at the university. We have, well, here up, in informatics. And in this project, they work with design parts connected to light, lightning. And uh, we also had the School of Architecture in the beginning of the project. They haven't, uh, well, they have finished their part now, so they're not a part of it any longer. Uh, of course, connected to architectural. And also applied physics, where we do energy efficient uh, calculations and, and uh, stuff like that. And not at least Umeå School of Business, as I told you, they are connected to the business arena and the plans. Uh, also RISE, RISE is a research institute, a big one in Sweden. Uh, and the, they are RISE in Umeå Interactive are represented uh, doing design thoughts and developments and as well as RISE Processum in Örnsköldsvik, 100 kilometers south of Umeå, dealing with uh, the development of different wood-based materials. And you can see about this in the hall, as if already seen perhaps, what we are doing. Uh, there are also other ones, uh, more external partners, white architects also here in Umeå, and uh, revenues, uh, doing, uh, helping the Umeå School of Business and uh, with the companies developing the, the, the business part. So that is what we are. But the background to the project was the thoughts about <coughs> the uh, building industry and how they contribute with the CO2 uh, problems. If we look at Swedish construction industry, they contribute quite, uh, quite much with the CO2 emissions. About 16% of all total amount of CO2 is from the construction industry. 
and uh, during the lifetime about 40 percent of the energy needed here in Sweden is for warming houses and different things into the houses. Uh, so that is the background. So we have to reduce the emissions. Uh, we are one part of it, but there are also others, of course, and the concrete industry also try to do their part, of course. I'm not saying that we are quitting concrete. So we need to develop it together. <coughs> But wood is an opportunity to use more wood, at least uh, when we are here in northern part of Sweden, where we have a lot of it. We have to use it in an appropriate way. So the sustainability is important. Uh, you can also see that the innovation rate in the construction industry here in Sweden is not as uh, high as in other industry branches. Uh, so other pr manufacturing industries have in plants gone further. We see now attempts where uh, the industry uh, develop more uh, fab uh, industry developed parts uh, gone from wall elements towards room modules lifting them on site directly. So that is this, this, this stage that's taken parallel. Uh, so, and overall the goal in Sweden is to increase the digitalization in every branch. So that is the future. Okay, so how do we do? What do we do in the project? Well, different development areas, uh, areas are the materials, as I said. Uh, where we deal with properties, of course. Uh, so, and uh, the tools, as I said, this has to develop together, so they fit. Uh, <coughs> and we're doing that at here at Sliperiet, but also at uh, Rice Interactive, where there are uh, new 3D printers. Uh, the technology is also developed, as I said, say, for instance, at uh, uh, Applied Physics and Electronics, where we look at the uh, different energy possibilities that we can build in to uh, 3D printed walls. Uh, for instance, if you have hollow walls, uh, you well, 3D printed walls that are use minimal of material, you have to have, of course, insulation and other stuff, plumbing and so on. And uh, you can design that on site or directly and also build in some other uh, functions, functionalities where you can increase or decrease energy need. We will talk about that later as well. So, and that is also a part of the design that has been developed at RICE. Uh, to see how n this design can be incorporated into the construction to, uh, to develop more functionalities that is important for us in the future with sensors or um, stuff like that. Uh, and of course, as I said, we use the business plan. So this conference we have targets on the design part, the production, and the material part. So now you understand that these are key areas for the project. So that will be interesting for us to hear more about all these invited speakers. So thank you for coming. And uh, develop this together with us. <coughs> As I said, we don't have the full answers in this small project uh, running for two, three years. We're not at the, <laughs> at the answers how we can construct and build with 3D printing. Uh, and that is something we will now discuss these days. <coughs> uh, I also have to say that, well, these were main areas, but also there are targets into the 
into the project that is very important as well as so that is to create new meeting places um, to cross borders so we have an open uh, house uh, uh, part where people can come and test and try out, out different techniques uh, which is not used in their way, daily work and in their subject. So this is a very important part of it. And we also go out to other parts, places, cities here in the region, northern region, and uh, share uh, our knowledge about materials and uh, knowledge about digital techniques for companies. So that is important as well. Uh, okay, here in this picture we have 3D printed houses from China. You already may have seen before in concrete. And they look quite, well, the same as normal, ordinary houses that we see today. So these were, were constructed in, in, well, elements like this and put together piece by piece here. But there's a lot of work that has been, has to be done inside. Uh, someone or those who have already constructed uh, environments for their living with the 3D printing and uh, in wood material. They already exist here in Umeå uh, and also in other places. They are more like this. So here are flying 3D printers. They scrape cellulose from wood or other materials, sawdust or whatever they find and chew it and mix it together with saliva or enzymes that's into in the saliva and put, well, add it on the border here on this envelope of the nest. And they also create these hexagons inside where they keep the small wasps. <coughs> so, can we learn something about this? Well, we're not constructing houses like this, but maybe we can learn something from them. So that is also something that we already do at uh, Applied Physics, looking into these biomimicry uh, 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 parts <clears throat> and you can ask us more about it. Let's see now. Well, uh, I will speed up a little bit. <clears throat> okay, these are from uh, Processum in Urshelsvik I told about and they are looking into different kind of materials and we have representatives from them here so you can ask them more about it. Here you have a crystalline animal cellulose uh, well, well-known material today uh, that has been used, not here, but uh, also in Stockholm at uh, Rice there and KTH where they produced uh, small miniaturized uh, well, parts uh, printed with nanocellulose. And here are different uh, tests that have been done here with a mixtures of different parts from the from the tree or from wood material. Uh, here is another example from Rice Interactive, uh, where we have their new, well, quite new uh, 3D printer. There are actually four of them, uh, quite large, and here's a mixture of saw. Uh, well, it's not saw. It's uh, grinded uh, wood, fine grinded, uh, mixed with, in this case, I think it was some kind of, of glue uh, from wood. 
but it's also other stuff like just pure water and uh, ethanol with different parts that we have that's where we have ongoing tests with. Here's another example where we developed the tools, the productions, the hang printer. We, have, we don't have it here outside here, but uh, it was in the staircase. And here you can see the threads that keep it. And uh, then we have some, it's, it's climbing up on the threads and position itself and uh, uh, put layer after layer on this tower here. It was one of the highest ones in the world at that time, at least. Uh, I don't remember now, four and a half meter or something. Here is an example of, of designing functionality from interactives. Uh, hexagons put together with uh, sensors and, and uh, connections from each other. We can sense and also s s steer uh, signals and uh, say light. Uh, so you have an advanced function into it. Uh, I told you about the energy savings. Here are some examples of a hotbox. Uh, outside uh, the ca at the campus where we have insulated boxes, not 3D printed at all, but we're here we are testing how we can make a passive temperature stabilization system where we have phase changing materials that will store energy when the temperature is rising and then uh, release it again when it's cooled down during night. So you can see from these, this graph here that is, well, here is the temperature rise without it and how it will uh, shift the energy and stabilize it more or less, and depending on how many you can use. And that is an example of how you can build in this into 3D printed uh, wall systems, as we think. And the thing is that it's passive and that is good, not use any heat or electricity to produce cold. Here are example of the past uh, graduation at the business plan work, one of it, uh, where we have uh, here a uh, company, Masonit Beams, uh, graduated from there. They get a diploma passing the, the business plan work. And uh, the open, day, uh, open house uh, activities I told you about here at Sleepy Riot. Uh, actually, today it's Wednesday. So we have an open house today. Oh, well, okay, tonight, not today. It opens at 4 o'clock. And it's open until nine. Okay, thank you. Uh, and here you can see from one of our labs, uh, different people from Ume or the region coming in and testing different new techniques. Here the it's uh, some some uh, well textiles they develop with uh, sometimes with electronics and do uh, try out different uh, machines, digital machines. And finally, these are exhibitions that we do going out, as I said, into the region. Here, I think it was in Nusche, a small village in the northern part of Westerbotten. Uh, where we invited different companies coming and hear more about materials and digital uh, techniques. So, now you know a little bit about Human University, Slipperiet, and the project, plus project. But now we turn on to the conference. And you have all the program. And as I said, 
we have divided into three parts that we think is both important for us and the project, but also for thinking how can new technique develop and how can we use new technique. For instance, if we talk about the design parts, they are very important that the designers and architects come into this and create something new instead of creating a house that looks the same or have the same functionalities as before. Use new materials, new wood, <laughs> uh, but sustainable materials in this. So it would be great to hear more about this. And we have a keynote speaker here, Birgitta Alstom, who will continue now and uh, tell us a little bit more about her thoughts in this area. And together we continue with the production part. And here you can see that we have uh, Vladimir from Siemens, not at all into the building construction part, but uh, it is very important for us to hear about their strategic decisions, how they have come into the 3D printing additive manufacturing part and how they use it in their production. So, well, we continue, you know, the, the, the program and the material part is in the afternoon tomorrow. So, use this time to discuss with speakers and with each other about these questions, about these issues. That is what the conference is about. So, now I think I probably forgot something, uh, but I leave that. Uh, as I said, okay, now I remember. <laughs> when you go out here, you see an interactive, um, uh, interactive carpet that you should put your feet on and see how it reacts. Okay, hmm? do so, test it. It's not in the hall, it's outside of here, so don't forget it. And as I said, it's open, it's an open hour, uh, open house day to day, so you can go into the labs, say from uh, lunch until the evening today. So, thank you for coming. <laughs>